Welcome to another episode of the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. Today, me and the boys, we're gonna go do a bowfin catch and cook video. That's right, we're gonna go catch, clean, and cook a bowfin. We need to stop in and get some bait and hooks. Part of every trip, man. You gotta load up with some gear. <sighs> Size sixes. Go. Here we go. Let's see. They haven't even ripened. They're still green. All right, we're here. We made it. We got to get this boat loaded up and get the boys on the water. Boys on the water. I'm just going to get the back here. Drop it. So before we catch any bowfin, we're gonna to try to catch some bait fish. I've got these number six eagle claw hooks here, and I'm gonna put some worms on those and see if we can't catch some bluegill. I've got these dock demons with the basic bottom rig and a quick change clasp, and I've got this two-aught circle hook for catfish and for bowfin, and I'm gonna swap it out with this number six eagle claw hook. I wish I had some smaller eagle claws, like number 14s, but we're gonna make this work. But these little quick change uh, swivels really make my life better. Here you go. Wait, can oh. I reel one? Yeah, I got a double. Here, reel that one in too. Yep, there you go, pull them in the boat, Dom. So I got, I got, I got a claw! Oh, duh. Oh, pull it in. You got a catfish. Oh All right, there we go. In the water. There you go. Nice Wait, this is <laughs> Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I accidentally. Yeah, I wish I had a bobble. Oh. There we go. Tom, are you pulling that anchor up all by yourself? Oh my, I have a proper a proper first mate now. Just put that right in the bottom of the boat, buddy. Tommy, give me a high five. Yeah. All right, we got bait, guys! Woo! Are you ready to enter the lair of the bowfin? All right, now, Tom. Uh, this is why I hate these burning shark reels. The end of the knob came off, the handle keeps folding over, and the gears are already rusted up. I thought you did, but I wasn't sure. So I just... Oh, pilot! Wait, let's use this. Whoa! I got a hit! Just behind you, a bowfin came up over the water and just his big mouth came over the water right behind you. Oh, look at this. We're getting the bite. Oh, look at this. Oh, here we go. Oh, that looks like oh, a gar. Oh, look what we got. No. That looks like, that's a gar. Hard. I meant, oh, I oh, 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 look at that. That is so cool. I, I love these. These are so cool. Woo. I love gar. Yeah, look it's at that. It's about to cool. spawn. Yeah, those are way cool. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Can I reel it in? Let's see. Is it on? Cat. Wait, it's a catfish branch. Yeah. Uh, Can we go swimming? There we go. Can we go swimming now? Hey boys, do you want to go swimming? All right, jump on in. Why don't you go for a swim? Yeah. Yeah. Where do you worry? You guys are just covered in mud. I'm gonna have to drag you behind the boat. I can't take you back in. I was hoping you guys 
Hold on. Hold on. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh. These both have massive teeth, so I'm using my extra long forceps today. Guys, these bowfin are awesome. One of the most underrated fish in North America. They fight like crazy. They jump out of the water when you hook them. Um, man, they're aggressive and they're just awesome looking. And uh, today we're gonna find out how they taste too. I didn't bring a stringer, so I'm gonna improvise one. Look at that tooth. Can I see it? Yeah, here, I'll show you in just a second here. Those teeth are not huge, but they're razor sharp and they're really small. They clomp onto you and then thrash around, slice you up really good. Can I see them? Oh, yeah. See, look at that. Oh my goodness, those are all... A lot of teeth, huh? There we go. We're going to see how my uh, my makeshift uh, stringer works. Yeah. That he wrote. You saw really? oh, it got the test. A little bit more. Before we... All right, so I got my rods out there and uh, the boys want me to play with them. So I think I'm about to get a little wet and muddy. <laughs> Sure. Plant. Sure, let's go look around. Let's go look around. What are the I'm here to find a little seaweed. <laughs> Bad attack! Oh no! I'm playing like a more looking way. <laughs> oh, look at that. You got a fish. Got a fish. Go get it. Reel it in. Yeah. Yeah, I bet that's a bowfin. Keep reeling it, keep reeling it. Yeah. Oh, look at that blue. I got a catfish. I got catfish. I got catfish. Good job, buddy. Look at that. Nice, nice blue catfish. Woo. <laughs> Tommy, you're muddy. Here, Tom, let Tommy have a turn. Go get it, Tom. Go get it, Tommy. Let Tommy have a turn. Oh, nice blue cat. The cat is playing dead. Oh, no, he's attacking. Ah! Oh. <laughs> yeah, I get people asking me why my boat's always so dirty. I'll give you two guesses. Tommy, why don't you grab it? Grab it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my oh, it's a bowfin. It's a big one. Oh, you lost it. Oh, oh, that was a nice bowfin. Tommy's bowfin jumped about two feet out of the water. It was awesome. Yep. These bowfins seem to really like the shallows right up next to the lily pads. They're all up in this lagoon and up against the lily pads. But if I get any depth to my bait, then I start catching catfish. You can catch these bowfin on lures, live bait, cut bait, under bobbers, on the bottom, kind of whatever works. Um, Oh, look at this. This bobber's getting a hit right there. There we go. There we go. Oh, what a mess. Oh, he's all tangled up in my lines. Oh. Let's see where... There we go. Here we go. Actually, I think it's Nathan's turn. No, no, you had a turn. Let's see what it is. Oh, channel cat or blue cat. There we go, buddy. Daddy, can you hold this? Can you hold You're swimming. For this trip, I'm using one aught and two aught circle hooks because that's what I had rigged up. But I think I really should have something a little bit bigger. These bowfins seem to gut hook uh, this bait a little bit. So a little bit bigger rig might might help a lot. Uh, oh, uh, blue cat! Catfish, attack! Ah! Reel it in, buddy. What do you got? Oh, a nice blue cat. Another blue cat. Nathan, what are you doing? Making mud angels. Mud angels? <laughs> sure, bud. All right, guys, shall we go home? Yeah, why don't you guys jump in the water and get cleaned off? Uh, go in there and get all cleaned off. Hey, Tom, get your head under the water. 
Time to let the bait go. All right, guys, get all the mud out of here. Get all the seaweed, uh, all the plants too. Well, we better get going. It's almost dark and I still have a fish to clean. So we better get back to the boat launch. Yeah. Let's go. Hop out, Tom. There we go, guys. Nice, healthy bowfin. Now, a lot of people get these confused with snake heads. If you want to know the difference, the surefire way is look at the anal fin. Like bowfin have this little teeny tiny anal fin. Snakehead's anal fins are kind of like the dorsal fin. They're just really long. They'll go from like here to here. So if it's got a tiny little anal fin, it's a native bowfin. All right, let's see what this boy had to eat. Oh, look at this. Big old piece of crawfish right there. A couple crawfish, more crawfish. The only thing in this guy's belly was one pretty good sized crayfish. This water is so brown, it stains everything. It makes it kind of brownish red. Tommy looks like a redhead right now because he's got his hair tainted from the, from the water. Well, after very little sleep, it's another beautiful day and we're ready to cook up that bowfin. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of an experiment for me. I've never eaten bowfin. I've never tried to cook it before. So we're just gonna kind of see what happens. I'm gonna pull the fillets out and inspect them and we're gonna take a little test piece and try something with it. And hopefully if all goes well, We'll uh, come up with a fun new recipe to try on this bowfin. I'll let you know what it's like. The texture on this meat has changed a lot from last night. It's really separating and kind of mushy. Look at the difference of this filet from today versus last night. And look at, look at it, there's kind of like this is like consistency of applesauce. The second filet has some of the same problems, but is in definitely in better shape. I think the real problem was I just didn't ice it fast enough. That's my best guess. Um, and I think I might have really done some damage there. Well, I'm gonna do a little experimentation with a little piece here to see if we can salvage this. All right, I got this little test piece here and I'm gonna sprinkle some salt on this and let it sit for about five minutes and see if the salt can draw some of the moisture out and firm up the meat a little bit. I'm gonna give it some black pepper there. All right, let's see how we're doing. Okay, got a little bit of color to it. That's all we need. Let's try it out. Well, the flavor's not bad at all and the texture's improved with cooking. It's not mushy at all. So I think I kind of boogered it up, not icing it, but it's salvageable. Um, I think we can do this. Mmm. Mmm. Not bad. Okay, for the good filet, I'm gonna go ahead and bake it in a coconut crust with a mango kiwi peach uh, pico de gallo and kind of a mango reduction drizzle on top of it. Uh, for the fish cakes, I think I'm gonna do kind of the fish cake version of that. I'm gonna try to make a sweet coconut fish cake and then use the same pico de gallo mango reduction on top of that. Um, I've never made a sweet fish cake before and so I'm winging like 75% of this recipe. So yay, let's do it. Got some mango puree and uh, we're gonna go ahead and reduce that. Yeah, I love this stuff. Reducing the puree is the most time consuming part of this whole recipe. All right, we reduced the mango by about half and it just slowly comes off the spoon. Perfect. Time to make the pico de gallo. And I can put cilantro on just about anything. Also got some pureed ginger. That, that, that. 
I'm gonna do some ginger, cilantro. All right, just add a little salt just to enhance the flavor. Mango, peach, kiwi, pico de gallo. That is fabulous stuff right there. That's good. You like that? Yeah. Well, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm preheating the oven to 375, because if in doubt, always preheat to 375. I'm gonna go ahead and salt the fillets and hope the salt helps firm up the meat a little bit. Also good for flavor and seasoning. One nice thing about bowfin, no bones at all. I mean, you just fillet this thing and there's zero bones to deal with. I put a paper towel down, see if we can get as much of this moisture. I've got all-purpose flour, beaten egg, and then sweetened coconut flakes. I know coconut can be controversial, but I am firmly pro-coconut. I love me some coconut. All right, let's roll it in the flour. That'll get more moisture off. If you're doing a lot of these, you use one hand for the dry ingredients, one hand for the wet ingredients. But when you're only doing battering three fillets, it don't really matter. All right, about 10 minutes at 375 degrees and it looks just perfect. for the fish cake recipe, which is very much an experiment. But all fish cake crab cake recipes involve some sort of breadcrumbs and eggs. Um, you, the breadcrumbs gives it structure and the eggs acts as a binder. Uh, the rest of the ingredients are for flavor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take panko and eggs and then I'm gonna add coconut shavings, ginger, a little bit of sugar, salt, uh, maybe some lime juice. We'll see what happens. I'm just gonna kinda go with it. And that fillet looks terrible. Put the fish meat on the cookie sheet and bake it. Feel like I'm making carp bait. This actually would probably work really good as a carp bait. I <laughs> should try this sometime. A little ginger or a lot of ginger, salt. Just a little bit drier than my uh, Panko corn jello pack bait. There we go. That's cooked through. Bit of a mess. Okay. Go and drain out all the moisture. Make sure it's nice and dry. I mean, even without any seasoning, this meat's really good. I mean, won't win any beauty contest. It looks kind of rough, but smells good, tastes good. I think it's gonna work out well. Mush this up. I'm just gonna go and add a little bit to it at a time. I like about one to one fish to breading, but it should make a nice little patty. Should be able to do that quite well. If you need them too much, then they kind of turn into this Play-Doh consistency, which isn't super appealing. And you want to make them kind of into thinner patties. Um, make them as wide as you want but try not to make them too thick so that they're easy to cook all the way through. Kind of like a hamburger patty. Make sure your oil's not too hot. This should take about five minutes or so for them to brown on both sides. If it's too hot, it won't cook all the way through. All right, there we go. Let's give it a try. Okay. If you're gonna vomit, throw out, go out that direction, okay? It smells good. <laughs> <laughs> you need Wait, to come you, help me? You gonna hit us with sticks? Is that what's going on? Ah! Oh, you did! Okay, no, no more, no more stick. No, no, fetch! Oh, not bad at all. Mm. Good. You like that? Yeah, I love the coconut, the mango. What? All right, try a little bite of yours? Yeah. Hey, yours is a uh, fish cake. Oh. Yeah, I will go. I've still got a bit of savory to it, but it's sweet and savory. It's not, you know, it's not too sweet, not no. too savory. Nice work. It is really good. Well, no matter what you call them, whether it's Grendel or Shupik or 
mudfish or bowfin. These are a wonderful native fish, hard fighting, tastes just fine to me. And uh, when it comes to eating, eating fish, remember there's no such thing as a bad fish, there's only bad chefs. If you guys want to see more Catch and Cook videos, check out our Catch and Cook playlist. And also check out my other channel, the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. We've got tons of outdoor cooking videos I've been doing lately. So, and quite a few fishing catch and cook videos as well. Well, anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning.